spending our money with ourselves so we can have buying power. You guys remember the case in New York where the Asian cop shot the black um, man in a, a dark hallway with no lights and he just started firing in a hallway and murdered this man. They found him guilty, but he got off because the Asian community came together and put money into politics and the police department and the police, I think it was the commissioner or um, uh, Sydney, you helped me out with whoever it was. Um, the commissioner or the prosecutor, he was black. And he said, in fact, we're not even going to um, recommend that he go to jail, even though he was found guilty of murdering this man. Right. Remember that Korean grocery store lady that shot that girl back Latasha in the head? Latasha Harlins. Yeah, she didn't go to jail. She didn't go to jail. Her people rallied together. The um, Korean lady who shot Latasha Harlins back in the day, shot, shot in the back over some orange juice. They rallied around her and she's a free woman. So, Didn't serve one day. Um, so that to me would be one of the solutions, a couple of solutions, Bernina. And here he says, every 28 hours, an unarmed black man is killed by the police. So y'all still going to tell me that's training? Yes. Yes. And so, um, Jamal says, delete the comment before she sees it, Al. Okay. I didn't see it. Um, and um, Darren says, fear. And Charlie says, the big six includes labor organizer, um, uh, Philip Randolph, yes. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, do, 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 uh, James Farmer. James Farmer, he was the Urban uh -huh. League leader. Uh, yeah. John Lewis, I knew that mm -hmm. was one of them. John Lewis, okay. I'm still hanging around. And the National Ur Urban League's Whitney Young Jr. Yes, so you Whitney guys Young, yes. Look that up. They were giving money to keep every, those were the black leaders back then. Now, John Lewis, as we all know, he still was still you know, Selma. And, you know, he's fighting for civil rights, but he's also taking money, you know, to keep everybody docile. So if that don't make you think, I don't know what does. And as you can see, um, some of the things that uh, he put up, some of those guys were in churches, leader of churches and, you mm -hmm. know, other organizations. So do the math. <laughs> um, and also speaking of cops, question to you both. Who was your favorite TV cop? Me, Cole Jack. Adam 12. No, I didn't like Adam 12. I liked, uh, well, I like Quincy. He was, I know he was a, oh, a medical say, examiner. Medical MD, yeah. yeah, he was a medical uh, MD, but. No, no, TJ Hooker. That was my favorite. Anything with William Shatner. That was always my favorite. I didn't have one. And uh, you guys, again, if you're watching the watch parties, come on over to my page and comment so I can actually see the comments. And Marcus says, I personally believe it is ignorant for anyone to pray for anything that we're currently going through because those prayers were answered hundreds of years ago. We have just failed to use, uh, uh, oops. We have just failed to use the tools that God put in place for us. It must never um, go unnoticed that we are currently the most powerful race um, of ourselves that have ever been. Yeah, we look like we're struggling in the 30s and the 40s instead of the year 2019 and beyond. Yeah, I, I, like I, I agree with you on that. We are the strongest people ever to walk planet Earth. It is a miracle that we've survived here. all we the things here. that we've gone through. And so um, nothing's impossible. I will say that. And let's see, Jonelle, what's happening? Uh, Al says, my favorite song, 80s song, uh, Demetra K goes, the cat clock eyes. It's talking about my eyes look like that cat. Yeah, oh, yeah. the cat. <laughs> Arsa says, about your class, your clash with Donovan. You mean my ass whooping with Donovan. I'll eat her lunch. <laughs> I'll eat her lunch. Um, and he says, about the cops training in fear, I will tell you what I tell many. Um, two people, this is this Negro again. Can be trying right to, at the same time. Yeah, come, coming on here trying to call me and stuff. Yeah. Sorry. Um, can be right at the same time. Uh, two people can be right at the same time as long the as their reasoning makes sense. Um, makes sense. I think cops... Let's see. I think cops are not scared of us, but even if they, that were true, after all these years, their training would have somehow been adjusted. It did. They so, stopped chokeholding people. No, they haven't, actually. So basically, if not <laughs> the cops not as in the individuals, then the system doesn't care about us, one or the other, maybe both. Right. Uh, again, I agree. I just feel like, how many times are we going to adjust the training to you guys, to your point about the chokehold? Yeah. That's why Eric Garner's case right. was... Um, but he wasn't supposed to use that hold. It's illegal. I know. And they're still using it. I right. saw... Uh, right. I can't remember it was a video I saw not too long ago. A cop is trying to do a choke hold on somebody. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys keep talking about training. Is, is, is it really an issue of training? Well, if, no, it, it is an issue of training. And I'll tell you why. How do you train somebody to stop using something illegal? Here's the, here's the thing. It's, it's like the thin blue line. The thin blue line. You got these so-called good cops there. There's no such thing as a good cop until that good cop starts turning in these bad cops. I agree. And that's what it comes down to. There's a problem 
in the training. Yes. And Charlie, you, you reposted the big six. Guys, please look mm-hmm. it up. And Marcus says, honestly, um, do we really have problems that we can solve with um, um, solve? Would a people that's going with the people, I think you're trying to say, that's going to continue to hate and seek to destroy us? Are we really, um, are, I think you meant to say, are we really having problems that we must leave behind or we're really having problems that we must leave behind? I'm trying to read that. Sorry about that. Um, and start to go where we are the majority and build amongst ourselves with our own. We don't consider the resources of Africa as our own windows. The um, same resources are supporting 75% of the world outside of Africa. And you know, we better hurry up and get over there because everybody else is going going over there there and taking over. Exactly. Uh, like I said, okay, we got $1.3 trillion here. How far can $1.3 trillion go in Africa? Demetra? Far. Very far. It could go really far. A lot of people are going back okay. to Africa. Like, you know what? Ghana, they're going to We out of here. That's what I'm saying. So if you're making, let, let's say, $30,000, do you know how far $30,000 goes in Africa? You live like Depending a king. Depending on where you're at. You live yeah. like a king. Yeah, you can do really well. A queen. Right. And Al says, escalate means increase rapidly. So mm-hmm. <clears throat> to that point, I mean. Pulling your gun is escalating. I, I, I know. In a training I, scenario. For, I mean, for it, any it, of these it, officers it, it, to, it, to go for their guns but that, immediately but you, you, on the but scene. You, I, even if. You're not going to convince me that's a training issue. If everybody's doing it. How many times do I got to tell? But it is, I, I don't think it's an issue of training. I think it's an issue of them being allowed to do those things. If every cop arrives on the scene and starts pulling their gun, it is a training issue. They're trained to do that. But if if you're not supposed to do that, then is it an issue of training or are you just being hard-headed? And you will have it's your blood thirsty. It's just like marching. Jonelle left, says. Right, left, Okay, right. so this is what Jonelle says. It's an issue of them... Um, liking um, blacks, uh, issue of them liking black skin. They could have knocked on the door that was open. They could have called for anybody in yeah. the house instead of sneaking around the house and shooting right. her through exactly. the window. Um, sh- let's see, shooting her through the window as they're giving commands. It's a black skin issue. Why isn't black mm-hmm. cops having these issues? We need a state of separation or those biased whites with badges and others without will continue their way of niggering, a uh, nigger hunting, AKA policing. And mm-hmm. I, that's what I'm saying to Jonelle's point. Why aren't the black cops having those issues? Overall? They are. They just, uh, they just convicted a Negro in Illinois not and gave the woman $21 to, million. Dollars. Not to the point that white cops are doing it. Just the same scenario of why aren't white boys or white men being murdered the way black men and, and now black women are being murdered. By police. How come there is not an issue everywhere? Why is it just, you know, between okay. certain people? Okay. I, it's obvious you, you, you've you taken the yellow, bu- the small yellow bus on the way to school. Hey, Shay. <laughs> no. Real quick. What is the demographic of most police departments in the United States? As far as race? Race. I, I would venture to say white. 80, almost 88% okay. of it is white. There's your issue right there. Right there. So then it's not an issue of training. It is an issue of training because I can take somebody who's all, I take an all white platoon and train them to do a certain thing. So if, if the police department, tell, I'll just if, so, say this. so You're if the police department me. has all these recruits there, a majority of them are white, whatever the deal is, okay, so it's obvious that there's a plan that why, why are, is this unit all mostly white, but yet they're going to be patrolling a, multiracial neighborhood that makes no sense in itself but again you should not escalate and uh eight six seconds put on the scene and then you're putting bullets in a six-year-old kid or eight-year-old kid that makes no sense but they're not doing that to white people though but anyway shay says simple y'all says they are not afraid it is intentional i agree That's what it is. That's not training. They're just not afraid. I'm not saying it's not intentional, but what I'm saying is there's something wrong in the training man. I'm not saying that it's not intentional. I could be a a supremacist, go through it like in the military, and I've seen guys do some horrific stuff when I was overseas. That was not how we were trained. Right. And so Arson says, I think Donovan has some stats ready. And then uh, Shay says, yes, that is true. Yes. I don't even know what you Mm -hmm. guys are talking about anymore, but I will... Um, 
read them anyway. Mm-hmm. And Charlie says, uh, replying to Al, de-escalate. De-escalate. Arson says, I always love Columbo. <laughs> and Marcus says, yes, you can kill the Dr. King bullshit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and tell... There is any fact until there's any facts to substantiate. to substantiate those comments. Please, please, please bury the bullshit. Show me the video. Show me the documents. Show me something. But don't give me bullshit that you heard over time. Okay, mm-hmm. Marcus. I know how you feel about Martin Luther King. <laughs> and a lot of people Martin Luther feel the, the King. same. Martin Luther King. King. But listen, brother. That whole big six thing is researchable. It's a fact. It's a fact. Yeah, they were all paid. It's just like it's a fact. With Martin Luther King and Mar- Margaret Sanger. She was the one of the originators of the eugenics program, Planned Parenthood. She said 30 years before he was even on the scene, we need to find Fine. a black pastor mm-hmm. that's influential in the black community to get him mm-hmm. to sell our talking points of eugenics. 30 years later, she gave him an award and he said via Coretta Scott King that he will always consider this his most prized possession. So you tell me if that's bullshit about Martin Luther King. Listen, I'm not saying he didn't do some great things. It is a fact that toward the end of his life, he knew he made very big mistakes in the way he was steering black people. And look where we're at. Look where we're at, but... He did some things to harm us as well. It's just a fact. That's not like I don't ha- have a reason to hate Martin Luther King. I think he did some great things. Mm-hmm. But as far as saying that he was above board, he was a deity, he was not. He just wasn't. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry that you are offended by the or, facts about Martin Luther King, but that's just the truth. Yeah, I remember in South Africa when I was telling the girls how uh, we were at the brewery and I was telling them how... Um, you don't see like too many statues of Martin Luther mm-hmm. King anymore and stuff like here in the United States because yeah. you know we don't edify. You know he wasn't the only one in the struggle and stuff like that. Uh, and they were like appalled, like, "Oh, you're never going to get rid of Nelson Mandela." But oh, yeah, Nelson Ma- Mandela, Mandela everywhere uh-huh. also is right. the same thing as what Martin Luther King did. There was a deal done right. somewhere down the line that said we will let you out of prison. Something happened. Yeah, something went down. And Chris, what's happening? Let's see. Did I make sure I make a comment? Chris, she says that. Uh, the KK cops mm-hmm. are the problem and not the training. I agree. That's in everything. And that's and what I'm saying. Well, I, let me finish these comments because yeah. we're way behind it. And Berdina says, Kojak and Al says, Donovan is right because the military police, uh, police, I think it mm-hmm. is very meticulous on their training. Yeah. Um, Alicia's mom is a sheriff deputy for 17 years. And she said the police station training is sor- short. short and weak and needs definite improvement. Mm-hmm. Okay. So to that point, if it needs, if I mean, every training that you go through is going to improve or at some point needs improvement. But how much training do you need to have to not shoot into somebody's house and kill them? And they don't know why you're there or even that you're there. Like, how much training does it take? How much training does it take for you to know that a chokehold is illegal and you keep doing it? It takes, is it an issue of training or is you just or is it allowed and you keep getting away with no, it? No, I don't think it's that. Okay, it, it's an issue of training. It is an issue of training. And I'm going to say this. When you train a, a paramilitary force to be military, look military, and use military equipment, that is a training issue in itself. Right. Then, right. while you're in the organization and they say, no matter what you do, we're going to protect you and we're going to do this and we're going to do that to you, it gives you a license to kill. Right. And Shay says, y'all all lost the plot. That's why they kill us 100%. Can you ex- mm-hmm. uh, expound upon that? I know we're behind a little mm-hmm. bit, so I'm going to catch up here. And Al says, Alicia's mom has a friend who is a police boot camp trainer, and her friend said the requirements are low, and the powers above have said each class must have a certain percentage of graduates. Right. Right, okay, but do you still have ongoing training? Or think okay, about... Okay, let me, let, me, let me just finish these. Yeah. Let me just finish these. Okay, and so, um, and John says, five reasons to... okay. Mm-hmm. Yah says, um, it's, if it's intentional, then training isn't going to change it. They want to do it. Right. Uh, we, 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 uh, let me get these comments real quick. You know, you know, uh, when, when, when you go behind the training, there's psychological things. They could weed these racists out just based on the psycholo- the, the, psycho- the, the psychology background. They can, but they don't. Exactly. Okay. Um, so Charlie says, it is not the training. It's the skin color. See, it's a black person. It's shoot and kill. Mm-hmm. Donald... Your brother says military training uh, through repetition breeds true professional soldiers and Marines, such as rules of engagement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Arson says, Donovan, we escalate, quote unquote, an issue when a situation compels us to escalating under any other circumstances is practically plotting to kill 
Um, yeah. If you ask Absolutely. me, and Marcus says, well, next week, let's have the Martin Luther King episode <laughs> and show the proof, the show, the video and the documents. Let's uh, do research and verify what you're claiming about the doctor, because I ain't, oops, I ain't, oops. I ain't buying it. And the funny thing is the people that probably wrote all the same people in the situations we wouldn't even trust. Well, mm. Marcus, the information is there because even if I brought it to you, would you believe it unless you saw it for yourself? Is there, I, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't have a dog in a fight. I'm not p- getting paid to say anything mm. um, unfavorable about Martin Luther King. I mean, it's just a stuff. It's a fact. So, um, <laughs> Jonelle says the issue is to state the st- uh, state to state mm-hmm. the high ranking um, officer uh, trained in Israel. Mm-hmm. You have mainly um, biased whites policing black communities mm-hmm. to mainly kill black youth. The state is uh, the stats is evident. Listen to, um, oops, listen to the honorable uh, Mr. Farrakhan warning us via justifiable homicide. Yes, mm-hmm. um, it's not con- um, coincidence. It's murdering and culling of us via biased white officers, state to state. We need to either patrol and police our own, defend ourselves, and separate. Absolutely. And that's what a lot of people say the issue is we need to police our own. And, uh, hey, Gina, what's happening? And Jonel says, look up police being trained in foreign country, mainly Israel. That's what Donovan's point is. Okay. And then um, here you say it's a fact. All right. So I got to all of the comments. Okay. So do you want to expound upon this bull cock of training you were saying? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just what he said. You got to look it up for yourself and kind of see. It's, and, and, and I don't know if you, you went through the thing, but there's a psychological background that they go through. Like mm-hmm. you said, they know what they're doing. I can't, if this racist guy gets through, he's going to shoot and kill no matter what. 88% of your uh, police departments are white. So obviously they have an agenda from the slave era. Obviously that's it. But the thing is, there is a problem in the training. Listen, I'm not saying there's not a... I'm sure there's a problem. Why they won't fix it, I don't. I'm sure there's well, problems why. in the training, but I am not going to bet the farm that is the training. That's Alone. why they're killing black people no, wholesale. No, that, that is not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that there there's a problem with integrity within, which is part of the training, the integrity within these police departments, and the uh, justice within these police departments. Like I said, there is no such thing as a good cop if... They know that they're planting drugs and sprinkling drugs on suspects and dead suspects. And these good cops will not, not cross the line. Just like the Trump administration right now, where you've got uh, longtime government officials, that State Department officials that know what's going on. And now when the, the floodgates about to come, now they want to come out and say something. Where were you in the very beginning? Where's your integrity in the very beginning? That's the problem. Right. When you don't have integrity. And... Uh, uh, Marcus says, I'm just saying, show it if it's there. Well, I can't show it to you right now, but you have you. Well, how about you? Just like Charles, uh, Ch- um, Charles did. He, um, Charlie, he Googled it and mm. he found it. Put it out There's there. a plethora of information there. I mean, it's not a secret. It's only a secret because you know why it's a secret, Marcus? Because the white man ain't told us about it. No, it's a secret because it's in a book. Well, because black people say it. And it's like, oh, no, you niggas lying. Right. But if white people put it out there, then it's got to be true, right? I mean, why do we have a hard time believing that Martin Luther King took a little cash on the he side? He did. How did his family become so enriched? I mean, why is that hard to believe? How did he support himself all those years? You know, going from Selma to this it place was a total to that of place? $1.3, I mean, $6 million between all of them. Mm-hmm. They got a payout to go... Um, to go keep black people docile. It's a fact. Every campaign, you got to have financing. We can't go to war unless somebody's going to uh, finance it. Right now, they move troops to Saudi Arabia. What, what did uh, Trump just say? Oh, Saudi Arabia's going to pay for it. Everything costs money. Right. John L. says, look at who cut their check. It's not the public. It's the banks. Right. And then, um, Chris, you said, we need our own. Al, absolutely, always. And then Marcus says, so... It would be safe to say that the most well-organized group of black people, such as the Nation of Islam, must be on a higher payroll because to be that well-organized and that um, unaffected across the United States and global now speaks volumes. Well, no, I mean, no shade, Marcus. I love you to death, but that comment don't even make sense. And I get where you're going with that. You feel like because your beloved Martin Luther King 
um, was not perfect. Now you want to attack the nation of Islam, but what you're saying is categorically false. We know that the nation of Islam has been effective. Now, just because some Negroes choose not to listen to the nation of Islam does not mean that the people within the nation of Islam has not been served. People of our nation of Islam got schools, jobs, you know, businesses, uh, um, businesses a, a whole host of programs and things. They are self copyrights. They, they they got their own newspaper yes. that's been around forever. Okay, how many name name me um some black newspapers that's been around as long as the um nation Islam Muhammad speaks the final call name name me a, 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 a newspaper that does that a black newspaper that's done that there are none name anymore. me a black newspaper or publication. That has not sold out to white supremacy like Jet, Ebony, and mm-hmm. all of the other Essence, magazines. So when you give a backhanded comment like that, with no, see, I can back up what I say. I'm not one of those people that's going to say something and then just be like, oh, well, because okay. right. I, you know, I, I said it. No, I'm going to be able to back up what I said. And so, again, I just want to put out there that your statement about the nation of Islam is false. But you know what? I'll let Jonelle get you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you though. And Al says, uh, Mike Greenberg at ESPN caught some heat a few years back when he said Martin Luther Coon in a way he yeah. was right, yes or no. Well, well I, I don't want to take it that far. Yeah, well he he was wrong in the aspect that he shouldn't be the one that, that said it and and to spread that on the And a he's platform. not the first time right. that some uh, uh, a news anchor has been on um film right. saying that. So that's just what they call Martin Luther King. I don't call him that. Do you, I, I wouldn't say like, I wouldn't say he was a coon. I think Martin Luther King, I won't say he, that. He did what he thought was best at the time. Yeah, he made he admitted that he made a mistake right. mm-hmm. by leading black people to turning the other yeah, cheek. Stokely Carmichael, out. all the younger cats started calling him out. And he was like, yeah, I, this is not the way to go. We've been doing this for 15 years and we yeah. haven't progressed. Right. Yeah. You know what happened to him when he went to Washington and talking about he was going to ask for a reparations check? What happened to him? Uh, right. So, and then Al, um, Al, you also say, so tell me everything ra- is racial to black people. And I don't think everything is racial to black people, but I think it's a lie to say, oh, well, you know, everything is fine. I mean, I know probably 80% of my day, um, I'm being looked at in a racist manner mm-hmm. by somebody, th- th- no matter what it is. And so I want to say everything is racial, but uh, when you're black in America, your race comes first when it comes yes, to everybody see, else. Let's see, yeah, see, see race first. first. Right. So we, we just need to uh, um, understand that and deal with that. And uh, Marcus just says, I wouldn't give a damn who put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> and what wealth does his family control? His wife lived a modest life years after his passing. I hate to get off the point of the police um, killing, killing um, us, but um, we need to put the rest there, um, tearing down the past when we're not doing shit about the present. Uh, see, listen, this is the other thing, too. We as black, see y'all, y'all, y'all who thump the Bible. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that to be disrespectful, but you guys who continuously talk about God and the Bible, y'all don't read it. It says, my people were destroyed for their lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge and their rejection of truth. So when the knowledge is out there, we don't want nothing to do with it. Cause we rejected and then we cry and whine about the state of our, um, um, the, the state that we're in. So is it the truth or is it tearing down or is it tearing down or is it the truth? I mean, you tell me just cause somebody is speaking the truth doesn't necessarily mean that we're tearing it down. How else are we supposed to progress if we can't become one with the truth? It's just a fact, Mark. If nobody's tearing Martin Luther King down, it's just a fact. Um, so you also say, go um, ahead. The the girl that got killed, her family would would want her to be forgiven, the officers to be forgiven, and all that other. I shall sure hope not. <laughs> so, just, Marcus says, but outside of what they do for themselves personally, how effective have they been in changing the global direction of black people across the U.S. and the world? Well, I know for a fact, my father being one of them who turned down a four year scholarship to Pepperdine University, full ride. Instead of going to uh, Pepperdine, he joined the Nation of Islam, and he said it's because of the Nation of Islam that he is a better person. He does he, um, he he said that they taught him about himself something that a white university was not going to do. They weren't going to teach him knowledge of self. And my oh, dad, just HBCU, right? <laughs> and my dad also 
worked for Ferrari back in the day and quit when the white man wanted to cheat him out of his check and he ain't worked for another man since. And my dad is 75 years old. Still working on cars. So I can tell you personally what I know that they've done. That's just my testimony. Um, and let's see here. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Uh, Al says, is the Chicago Defender a black-owned newspaper? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I have to look that up. I'm not for sure. Because I know the Tribune got bought out. And uh, I'll look it up. And Jonell, you say, we understand what you're saying, Queen. They select the biased, ill-minded white officers who desire to be the pawns of the Zionists like mm-hmm. Amber Geiger and the officers shooting black, black people. people. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Those are the type of people who get past the mm-hmm. psychological exams. Right. And, oh, it's okay. You didn't do so well on the train. Those are sure. the people they want. They, want, they yeah. want the people to go in there and be judgmental and um, escalated, if you will, in the black community. Mm-hmm. They go in a black community and they pump fear into black people just by their presence alone. Mm. Why is it that black people in America, especially black men, fear going out and coming home at I'm uh, coming back home? I don't. Are, are, are you, you probably don't, but I know there's a lot of black men who do who fear it is, is today going to be the mm-hmm. day. It fear that if a white police officer especially pulls them over, am I going to make it out of this situation alive? They I'm going to jail because before it was like, well, damn, I don't go to jail. But now it's like, I hope I don't die. Right? And so, um, uh, uh, Marcus says, and I would even say this currently, the most powerful black person in our existence is still Barack Obama. Okay, I'm gonna, let me finish reading the rest of your comment. Why don't we give his black ass the heat for not stepping up and standing up as the president uh, um, after his presidency. Well, I don't know necessarily where you've been, <laughs> um, but we always give Barack Obama heat. And I, I know think, I do. But, okay, I'll ask you this. Who is Barack Obama influential to? More white millionaires and, doubled under the Obama administration. Right, and to be influential... He doesn't he in some way have to uh, influence us to do something to say like what has he influenced us to do other than to vote for him two times and we've come up empty handed both times and so when you say that people don't take Barack Obama to task that's a lie we take Barack Obama to task all the time all the time but Barack Obama he's influential he's done he's, he's in, he got his yeah exactly I mean he, he, Barack Obama is I mean I don't know necessarily what he's doing now but we don't hear he's chilling. We don't hear him, you know, speaking up for the things that go on in the black community. Hell, you would think he would. He was the first black president, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, I don't don't know where you've been, Marcus, but we do do that. We do take President Barack Obama to task. I mean, I know he's gotten some Netflix stuff, you Mm -hmm. know, him and Michelle Obama. Um, Somebody said to me the other day, that they would, would they want to, they want Michelle Obama to run for the presidency of the United <laughs> States. And I asked them why. I asked them why. And they really couldn't say why. And I said, you mean the Michelle Obama who has been um, silent. silent when it comes to black issues after she's left um, the White House? You mean that um, Michelle Obama, the Michelle Obama that has denounced uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan and Jeremiah Wright, the man who married them, and they sat up under his church mm-hmm. for 20 years. You mean that, Michelle Obama? Um, why, why would she be a good president, especially for black people? Right. Um, and then now that this uh, second shooting has taken place, how many of the Hispanic Congressional Caucus have come out and spoke at what an uh, outrage and a tragedy that has just taken place? How many of the, Zy- uh, the Jewish community come out and said, oh my gosh, we've got to go to our brothers and sisters over there and and support them. Well, why would they? Because they know forgiveness is coming right away. Here we go. They're going to forgive us right away. Just there wait for it. Like I said, and then when people get on us, or me especially, because I'm not concerned about kids in cages on the border. I'm not concerned about a wall being made. This is why. I get it. I got to take care of my own. You take care of your own. Right. Jonelle says, we're not talking. We're doing the works. Oh, okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. We're not talking. We're doing the works of the nation is clearly evident. Our schools, farms, businesses, being, um, et, et cetera. It is as it is as it always been for the service of our people. Clearly, as the Honorable Elijah, uh, oops, Elijah Muhammad teaches, 
All we have to do is put up a clean glass next to a dirty glass. How can you say the nation has had no effect on black people when it's black people in the nation in, inside and out supporting the nation? Hmm. Mark, is he talking to you? <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it is really good that we have these discussions. This is, this is the stuff we got to talk about because without communication, there is no understanding. Right. I mean, I know a whole host of people been helped by the nation of Islam. I mean, so to hear that, oh, Nation of Islam has just been up there for all these years and, you know, it's been doing nothing. That, that's a farce. Well, since we're talking about the Nation of Islam real quick, I've got a quick story to say. Because of the Nation of Islam, guess what I did today? What did you do? I defended a sister uh, that yes. was tell, in tell distress. Us, tell us about your story. Yes. There was a girl, a lady. I walk into the AMPM, which I'm going to get some gas. And there's a big line, and, you know, she, and the sister's just going off. Blah, 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 blah. You know, like, you know, I'm thinking, oh, Lord, here we go. Another sister, loud mouth sister, just going off for no reason. So I'm sitting in the line, blah, blah, blah. And a Hispanic lady comes in and tries to cut the line. And like, oh, I, I got to get my gas. I got to go. We're all in a rush to get, 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 you know, to go. So the black girl tells him, wait a minute, you know, you, you got to deal with me first. You don't cut me off. Remember I've been saying that, yeah. how they make it seem like we, we don't exist. They just... Right. Just step right over us and stuff like that. We've got to stand up and let them know we exist. We're here. We're people. We're human beings. Get your ass in the line, lady. So the sister is, you know, telling the girl, get in the line. And, you know, and the, you know, the, of course, it was a Hispanic cash, uh, cashier. And she was like, it's OK with her. She's going to take care of her people. Hmm, group economics. Wow. Isn't that, <laughs> how, how, funny how that works. And so the lady makes a fuss. You know, like, no, you got to deal with me. So the lady's like upset and she gets in the line and then she starts talking shit in Spanish. The sister breaks out full Espanol, y'all. <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, the whole thing. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, it's about to it's about to jump down right now, you know. And so the Hispanic lady's talking shit, whatever. And. You know, I had to tell her, like, you know, she's like looking at us, the people in the line, like, you know, hey, look at this lady. You know, she's no, we're like, no, you're in the wrong, man. This is America. We do things a little bit different here. And an ass whooping isn't worth <laughs> getting some gas to get your ass whooped because you're in a rush. You know what I mean? We're all in a rush. And so I was like with the sister. I was like, no, you're right. She's wrong. This is how we're going to handle it. Blah, 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 blah. And then so we waited for a quick minute. Then the Hispanic chick's man or whatever comes in. Now, again, you guys, I'm, you know, I, I'm sorry if this sounds racist or whatever. I have no reason to be afraid of a Hispanic person because I live near them. So I'm not afraid of a Hispanic person, especially when they're five, six and built like a keg. OK, I was going to handle this guy. OK, so um, he kept he kept mean mugging me and stuff. And I kept mean mugging him back. You know, it's like, really, are we going to do this? But I felt proud of myself because I wasn't going to let this sister be disrespected because, again, I've said this and I say it all the time. We got to protect this black woman if we want respect for ourselves. It's that's as right. As that. It's as simple as that. Big and, ups. and that's something that the nation does teach. Big ups. There you go, Marcus. And Al says, oh, God damn, y'all have got, um, y'all got big baby. <laughs> Started. That's what he called me. I uh, started. <laughs> I told y'all a month ago. <laughs> One of the number one rules of the Demetri K show is not to ever say anything bad about the minister, minister of the nation yes, of Islam. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. And Marcus says, I'm not saying you and Donovan personally. No, no, no. I'm saying we must preach the, uh, preach the conversation as the masses. We must make him uncomfortable in existence among us as um, as a people. Who is him? Mm -hmm. who, who is him uncomfortable, if I'm not mistaken? I don't know what he meant. And uh, Bernina says, this is a joke. Barack is among the missing. <laughs> <laughs> if I guess if I drank milk, maybe I saw he, I would see his, you know, missing thing on the back of a milk carton. But hey, yeah, hey, he missing in action hey, big time. Like a lot of baby boomers, he got his and he's taking that ladder and said, I'm out. I'm pulling it up. Good luck to y'all. Right. <laughs> Did they go low or high? I think they went high. They went high. <laughs> they went high. <laughs> Uh, Jonelle says, what is Barack Obama influencing us to do but be better tools of white sovereignty? Mm -hmm. Where is the liberated state of mind? All Obama is doing and has done is within the regulation of yes, white sovereignty. Um, what is Obama and his Obama led um, us to? Um, hmm, we need a true, full and complete freedom. I mean, Donovan says it the, um, the, all the time. 
more white millionaires were created under the Obama Double. administration. So while we were losing our homes and our wealth, the white people doubled. The millionaires doubled. And I'm not saying it was because of Barack Obama, but police brutality amongst black people grew, grew as, well. as well. And racism within the United States. Right. So. And we know why the yeah. racism grew, because, you know, they want a black president. Mm. But those are just some things to think about, you know. Um, and then Marcus says, would it not be fair to say that America's well-organized machine that is currently unstoppable until the world ends with saying that why are we not pushing to leave instead of staying Instead, instead of staying, I'm trying to see the rest of your comment, um, and continue to suffer because the haters around us are currently leaving to go where we may go one day to prepare to control our asses once we get there too. No, that's exactly what's going on. That's exactly what's going on. Yeah. It, 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 it's kind of like you know where you live right now. And everywhere in the United States, there's a housing issue, right? So everybody's leaving the concrete jungle and they're coming out here to get you know cheaper homes that they can afford to live in. It's the same thing globally. Right. So, I mean, you, you know, you, you can't escape it. But the point is, though, like everybody else, we got to be smart. Let's get over there and get that money while, you know, get over there and right. get that land while we can, while it's cheap. Yeah. Because by the time we get over there, it's going to be gentrified out. We can't afford it. Yeah. And it's, it's on its way. I mean, we saw it uh, firsthand. First and, uh, yeah. Al says, Donovan, I defended a sister in the mall, too, said she was having some difficulties. I think she was mm. in line or something like okay. that. Um, and as a, um, a white man behind her, just kind of watching her. And, mm. you know, Al said he went and he helped her like, dude, yeah. you know, yeah. like, yeah, he probably didn't think nothing of it. Oh, yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, you know, but that was one of the one times. And I was impressed with the system when she broke out that Espanol. I was like, oh, like, no, get hey, it, girl. girl. Get, get it. Did you get a number? Nah, she, uh, didn't, she didn't have no backside. P- plenty of this, but not, you know, well, anyway. Reginald says, uh, why are we keep calling ourselves black? We are African from aboard. Abroad, well, yeah, we know. Well, yeah, uh, black is an we, adjective, so yeah, it's, we, it's, it's like when we say white man. When you say white man, you're just saying something in, incidental in general, yeah. about him. But right. he'll say, I'm an Italian white man or right. I'm a German white man. So right. when we say we're black, a lot of us don't know where we're from in Africa. Mexicans call themselves brown. Right, you know, it's just an adjective. Yeah. Um, and then Charlie said, Louis Farrakhan took Obama t- uh, to task. Yep. He said what... Sure did. Um, what did Obama do for you? Nothing. Obama fought for everyone, even gay rights. Yep, Obama sure did, did nothing for black America. Not even one black appointment to the Supreme Court judges. Yep. Yeah, he appointed a lot of women. and a White men uh-huh. and Hispanic women and stuff. He does. Right. I mean, but you got to remember, Obama was put there for a certain reason. Yeah, I mean. And it wasn't for black people. Right. That's for damn sure. And we know that him and Obama... Um, were friends or mm-hmm. friendly, if you will, mm-hmm. um, live not too far from each other. They've met several times, and all of a sudden, you know, when he got up there, he was like, <clears throat> <clears throat> "Gotta play the game." Who? Yes, you gotta Farrakhan. play the game. And then, you know, and Farrakhan said it too. He said, "I had this picture of um, Obama and I for a long time." Yeah, I when he was young, not starting re- out. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I just chose not to release it because he said Obama came to him and said, "Hey, you know, you can you keep it on the QT, the right. quiet tip, exactly. you know," and he did. But, you know, since he wanted to get up there and act and brand new, he was like, bow, here we go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I said, uh, you know, politics makes strange bedfellows. They right. really do. And Reginald says, we need to be racist because racism benefited other races of people that has oppressed us. And, and Reginald, that's what I was asking about as far as religion. What are white people that are Christians and are reading the Bible doing differently than we are doing? I am for group economics, which is a form of racism. I want to... Uh, do what they're doing. All these other groups. I want to pool my money with my own people. <laughs> they are crazy. You talking about <laughs> warning? Donovan has added a feature to the Demetri K show that if anyone talks <laughs> bad about the minister in the nation, there is a bitch. You gonna uh, get deleted button starting next week? Now we never do that. Uh, everybody's allowed to speak their mind yes, here. Yes. Uh, and then, uh, Marcus says, "Well, I I will say." We can't agree to disagree, which is probably mm. best considering that we can't do nothing about the past. We can only do, do something, something about, about the present. The, absolutely. Well, you know, Marcus, and the reason I was bringing it, um, him up along with the, uh, the big six or the rest of the big six is that a lot of times, because uh, somebody else brought up about how um, they get money. And that's how I ended up bringing it up. They get money. And a lot, a lot of times the check is bigger than the mission, you know. Hey, you know, these Negroes ain't going to listen. No, I mean, I'm not saying it's right, but if I like, I like to play devil's advocate a lot. Yeah, we know. So if JFK and them was offering me a portion of $1.3 million back in the sixties, which is a lot of money, I would probably say to myself, you know what? These Negroes ain't really, all they really wanted some water. Well, well he, white people. Well, here's the thing. Modern day right now, John Lewis. 
He's been in Congress a very long time. What's his legislative accomplishments? This guy was a civil rights leader. He has put out legislation for the people in the cages. He's put out legislation for the LGBTQs. He's put out legislation to make statues of his civil rights friends. But in the neighborhood of Georgia where he comes from, or in that district, looks like shit. Just like the other cat that got called out by Trump. Um, um, Elijah Cummings. Elijah Cummings. And Marcus says, all you have said is my point to Obama. We must start preaching that his current attitude is bullshit. Yeah, it is. It is. No, we do. We, we, we do. And we absolutely do, Marcus. So we totally agree with I you. I am not totally. an Obama supporter. I'm not going to bash him, but I'm not a supporter. All right. Mm-hmm. We're going to tell the truth. Yeah, it the ain't truth. tearing down. It's the right. truth. Jonelle says, Muhammad Ali changed his name and so many others due to the nation. I so did many others due to the nation. You know Malcolm X, Barcon, the Panthers, and the majority of so-called people and organizations because of their uh, the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got to get the book out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, Elijah Muhammad. Muhammad. You got You got the five percenters, various artists due to the nation, mm-hmm. Million Man March, Black Power, et cetera, due to the nation. You don't know the influence and example of the nation Throwing stones at it. The Zionist is not against the nation if it's influence and truth wasn't so potent and potential universal to change Mm -hmm. the dynamics of white supremacy and white sovereignty. They clearly don't fear, um, I think, I mean, reverence and et cetera, like they fear the truth of the Honorable Minister um, Farris Khan speaks. A man that called two million black men and shut the government down on a Monday. Yep, clearly the influence of the Honorable Minister um, Farrakhan and the nation is beyond scope. All praises due to Allah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's not even up for debate. Yeah. An, a, another good fact to me, I, I changed my uh, given name and I got me a name that, uh, that identifies me with God. That's because I've read a lot about the nation and uh, Islam. Al, you got, you, you, you got issues. <laughs> issues. <laughs> I'll let you read that one. Okay. It says, whenever I see a sister with no black side, I look black at them. Backside. Backside, I'm sorry. And I look at them, those old ass records in Donovan's house. Damn, they still make you laugh. Yes, 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 yes. Very much so. Very much so. Charlie says, um, Louis Farrakhan is the man. He is on fire. He got your back. Yes. Mm-hmm. For his whole, well, and his whole entire yeah, life. Yeah, and, and a lot of a lot of stuff that people, like I said, one thing about the nation, they they move in silence. A lot of stuff that they're doing, you wouldn't even know right. that they are doing. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, donations in certain charities, mm-hmm. they they do it under a pseudonym name because they don't want to be associated with it. And uh, I hope I say this right. Uh, a Tasi, peace, love, and light family, same mm-hmm. to you. And Reno hey. says Barack. Obama came from a family with money. Yes. Barack Hussein Obama Sr. was a king and senior government econo- yes. Uh, economist. Yes, yes, he was. That and, was his father. And Obama spent a lot of time with his grandmother. And that's why I tell people, that, you know, he's a black president, but he's not the black president. You know what I mean? Because, right. Because his experience as a black man is not the same as uh, another black man Correct. of the same uh, vibe. Because if he needed $50... His white mother could give it to him. Or his white grandmother could give it to him. Because it wasn't then. It uh, wasn't said that his uh, grandparents left him. Uh, oh yeah, a significant bunch of amount money. of money. Yeah, yeah. significant uh-huh. amount of money. I said like something like four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. So you're right. Not to discount his blackness because no. I don't want to do yeah, that. Yeah. No. No. no he's he's not black. doing that either. Yeah. But to your point, he didn't have what people would say is the typical right experience. Black experience. Right. You know, the black man in America. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and. And then you say, um, um, where are you all? Said, where are you? We are in Southern California. Yes. Where it is kind of, is it hot today? Or is it just me? Really? Just my, just you. Just Sitting me. Sitting next to me. Because you full of hot air. <laughs> so anyway, you guys on the podcast. We, got, uh, minute, minutes ago. we are about to get out of here. We thank you so much for joining us on this Sunday. We will be back next Sunday. As yes. always, if you have uh, any questions, comments, or concerns, please let us know. Yes. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, this week, you guys heard about that bullying situation. We're going to go talk about that on uh, Free Flow Fridays. Free, yeah, we need to learn how to say that. Huh? Free, Free Flow, Flow Fridays. Friday. We want to talk about um, bullying. I don't know if it's an epidemic, yeah, if it's uh, yeah, ever you, gone anywhere. Yeah, but if you guys are going to YouTube, there was a, a video, and this kid's just getting oh racked. God. He's yeah. getting racked, and we have to stop telling these kids not to defend themselves. That is unnatural not to do that. And let's see. Oh, and so. Uh, oh, Fountain Valley. Oh, uh, right. you're in Fountain Valley. And Charlie says Belgium, Europe. 
Wow. Ooh, wow. You're all the way across the pond. <laughs> and Marcus says, honestly, right now, I believe that Jay-Z is currently the most influential black person on the planet. Mm, and before okay. you snap. <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, hey. I mean, he, he has... says, before you snap about the NFL thing, like many said, it's history. It, uh, it's history speaks.